So exercise number one, everybody that is not in a noisy place, unmute your mic. <laughs> so like I said, all oh, right, glory to God. So like I said today, um, I said we'll do it a bit differently. Um, I know that the way you would have expected is that we go, I go straight into teaching and all that and all that. But I know that I've done a bit about a bit of some teachings in and out on um, the darkness of the soul, um, what do you do when, you know, things are not working. And if some of you have gone back to that message, you might be able to get a thing or two from there. But today, I want us to do something a bit differently. So first thing, or first question, what does it mean when you say you are burnt out? What does burnout mean? And please, we are going to be very interactive. I want us to learn from ourselves, actually, and I want us to bring out some of the things that we've done when we are burnt out so that we can find, you know, wisdom in, oh, this is how I cope, this is what I do, this is what I do, this is how I do. And from there, you able to, some of you will be able to deconstruct the way this, you know, thing has over you. And some of you will be able to learn new ways on how to manage burnout um, easily. All right. So first question, what is burnout? 50 marks. And but also I see someone on the group. Well, they promise you that you're going to be your best behavior today. <laughs> your utmost best behavior. Utmost. <laughs> All right. So Lowly says low battery. All right. I robot. Well done. Pastor says tired and frustrated. All right. I want to hear your voice now. What's going on? Where are the people? I be all of you still at work. Anybody? You can mute your mic, please, and just um, speak. Drained. Drained. Okay. Okay. I want us to put these words down. Um, drained. So low battery. Um, tired. Uh, what did Pasi said? What? Well, let me see. Let me just go there. Overwhelmed, I like that. Other person says drowning. Someone says when you want to block, so that's avoidant. Let's just call it avoidant. You don't want to see anybody. Okay. Listless. What did you say? Useless? Listless, like you're just like not interested. Listless, just moving about, not doing anything, not interested ah, in anything. Okay, Listless. okay. So, so can we also say maybe apathy? Like you just you're you've lost zeal for anything. Like everything's just me and me and me. Yes. So okay, so apathy yes. is a good word. Okay, so nothing's very exciting. Even the things that you love, they bring your best ways. Like eh. Somebody says lethargy. Hmm. Grandma now don't the entire um, listless, yes, like um um Oluwatosin said. Okay, ah, Minika, gross apathy. It's people like you that Isaiah 60 said, and darkness covered the gross darkness the people. <laughs> so uninterested. All right, all right. I, I think another one would be maxed out capacity. Ah, yeah, yeah. When you've maxed out capacity, like you are, you fired with all cylinder and now you're empty. There is no more jukes. All right. Any other person, for the people that are muting their mic, I'm really grateful. Thank you. You guys are my fans. If I open a radio station, I'll give you free airtime. All of you that are not speaking, I'm looking at you. Can I, can I, I, yeah. All right. Because I want it to be as lively as possible. It's already a very tense topic. The one thing I do not want to do, and I don't feel I, I don't feel the spirit of the Lord leading me to do, is to talk you out or talk you into it because emotions and matters of the soul are best solved from talking. You will find out that when you are burdened and you are a bit in pain, sometimes you want a listening ear, sometimes you want someone that can just listen to you and not judge you. 
Why does that happen? Why is it that a lot of times when you are feeling a, a certain type of way, even though you are saying you don't want to talk to somebody or you don't want to talk to everybody, you still also want to talk to one or two people, you know, just to let them feel, let them know what you're feeling. It's because emotions sit deep in the soul. And the way you're able to expunge it is a very good chance of you getting out of that quagmire, right? Um, so I want us to do something differently today. I want us to contribute into this um, so that it can have the desired effect. All right. Fatigued. I like that. Fatigued. Um, I see fatigued. Uh, let me see. Okay. So I've told Uluwali and Miriam, I'm going to support you guys in the chat group one way or one or the other. Uninspired, uninspired. Yes, yes. So that also goes into a bit of apathy. Very true, very true. Um, okay. What about extremely burdened? Exhausted, yes, I hear you. Exhausted. Does, does does that resonate with anybody? Extremely burdened. Yeah, always wanting to cry, especially if you're the kind of person that you express emotions with tears. And it's two ways. You express joy with tears. Same, you also, uh, you also express sadness with tears. Um, yeah. Um, incidentally, I'm one of those people. Uh, when, I'm ex when I'm laughing, my guts, I start to cry. And when I'm really emotional, emotional, I tend to cry. Um, so tears for people like that is an outlet or is it's a it's an expression of emotion. So you cry a lot, tears for happiness, tears for sadness. You can watch a beautiful movie that ended very, 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 very mushily and you will cry. It's because that expression of emotion or that emotion finds expression in tears. So I'm just trying to say this so that you don't think that, oh, my own has not reached tears, but it's a form of outlet for people that, you know, bear those emotions. All right. Okay. Spent. Yeah. <laughs> Licking water. <laughs> this good chat. Good. Oh, my God. Um, um, <laughs> Uh, Claire, you're not taking classes now for people that want to cry with <laughs> cry with movies. Okay, another question I want to ask is, how many of you, when you feel like this, also feel the emotion of fear? Fear. Anybody? This exhausting, you just start to feel fear and confusion. Thank you very much. Fear and confusion. It's almost like things cannot hold. The fact that Exactly, anxiety, yes. You start to feel like fear of failure, exactly, fear of meeting, mm, of, I, I want to, do, I, I do want to say messing up. Fear of meeting up is a bit unclear to me. Um, yeah, fear, unnecessary, un, yeah, uncertainty about the future, exactly. Yes, yes, yes. How many of you feel alone? When you feel these emotions, not in the stomach, fantastic. How about alone? You just feel like nobody gets you. Um, um, you, 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 you are in a crowd, but yet you still feel you, you're, you're lonely. People, you are laughing, but you still feel like nothing quite fits in in your spirit. You, you just feel like, <laughs> now leave me work at home. Like people cannot quite get it. And sometimes it's even exhausting trying to talk to people about it because you just know that even though they care, you just know that they don't get it. They, you know that they care, but you, you just feel like they don't get it. All right. So I, I, I see that we all are in the same WhatsApp group. Yes, feeling neglected. Yes. Um, um, you don't you don't want to you don't want to have to think. So you indulge in things. Aya, Genica, hey, 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 where you are going? Hmm. Guys, so true. Like there was a time in my life that one of the ways that I knew that there was something going on in me, I just entered into impulsive shopping. I would just be looking for what is not lost. 
I'm not looking for clothes. I'll be at clothes, clothes, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, stores, just scrolling and scrolling and buying, burning my credit card. You know, the clothes will not come again. I'm not allowed even like it. It's just being meh, meh, meh. You know, it's almost like you are looking to satisfy something. But every attempt you get just gives you like, like you feel like it's a promise of, that thing promised you a one hour, a one hour fulfillment. And the thing comes and it's only giving 15 seconds. You know, so you are back at looking for another thing that gives you another high. Yeah, how many of you feel that way? You see that we are not so far from cocaine addicts. <laughs> Food, hey, impulsive eating. You say, no, I just feel peckish. Peckish, who? Peck on me. You are just eating. You know, this is no longer for, for, for satisfaction. It's just a obnoxious feeling of you feel so empty that food cannot fill you. Oof. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sugar obsession. Yeah, yeah. How many of you at that time you just become extremely chatty? You are just you are just saying random stuff. Like you just feel like you just need to be you just need to be talking. Like if you don't talk, you're just going to you're just going to commit suicide or something. Something horrible just happen. You just you are just chatting. Then some other people you are just extremely quiet. You are just silent. Yeah. Yeah, that's when you crack the most perfect. You are cracking the most jokes. You are, you know, it's almost like people are like, oh, you're on a road to deal, you know. Thank you very much, Oluwole. See, this is why I wanted us to do this. Because a lot of you are finding out that certain things that you think you are doing from a place of hobby is actually an indication of something even deeper. So, guys, let's keep it coming. I see why... God wanted us to do it this way. You can see that we're now bringing out, how I many of you endless scrolling on, on, on Instagram. You are on YouTube watching, looking, information left, right, and center. You are just downloading, uploading. You are big, 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 big. Endless, mindless scrolling. Good. You know, there was one day I was doing this and God was like, what are you you define? Like, just tell me, what is lost? Where you did, you know, very ferocious scrolling. You're scrolling like as if something is about to, like the more you scroll, the more your bank account will decrease. Like, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? Hmm? All right, all right. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah, let's, 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 let's switch it up again. How many of you around this time, you take that one, you know, just one shot of that, your lovely, expensive bottle of wine. I didn't say beer, you know, just your wine. You just, you just take that beautiful shot, you know, you just you just want to kick it with the girls or you just kick it with the guys, you know, just you just look for that nice restaurant, you know, ask them for that particular bottle of, you know, expensive tea. Oh, very blast for me. All of you that are forming, you know, hey, 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 God has seen your taste bud. He knows that God has touched it. We know he has seen it. Yeah, you want to type it there. God has seen my taste bud. All this other, all of you are saying water. So how many of you, you know, at those times, you just take that one bottle or you just, you know, go to that favorite bar of yours. How many of you, when you get like this, you just drench yourself into music? You just, that's when you are listening to uh, ah, which song was that that I heard? You know, it's amazing how music, you, you think you've run away from music because you don't buy their CDs. Auntie, you'll be shocked the content of music you know if you're an ardent user of Instagram. And I'm talking secular music, by the way. You'll be shocked the volume of secular music that you know one phrase, one line, one beat just because of Instagram. I am trying to remember that song now. I went yesterday, I went to um I went to a restaurant, like an eatery. I just wanted to get it to go. And we we're playing a song, you know, on, on the airwaves. And I was shocked that the person that was trying to um give me my invoice for what I was 
buying was singing it and I was singing it and both of us looked at each other and we smiled and I'm like only me day really bro <laughs> like really <laughs> I'm just saying that the song was locked up in my subconscious because at some point at some point I was listening I must have listened to it on Instagram I, I, I know it's not I must I know I listened I know I found that song on Instagram I don't have a collection of you know secular music anymore um, so I knew that that song could have only been, and it was a recent song. Oh, and I knew it was one of these, you know, the song that they used to do challenge. It's, I, in fact, no, I bless God, I can't remember. Anyways, but what am I saying? For some of you, you just drown into it. I'll give you an example. I remember one time in my life, but this was a long time ago, um, when I was going through, you know, a very huge season of rejection. Things were not working out. I was not getting into school. Things were just bad. And I remember those days that I would sit beside the radio. Back in the day, they used to do uh, weekly at 40 or something. Talk weekly at 40 or something like that. Um, and at night, then that's when they would play all the slow music, all the R&B, you know. Hope you guys can hear me. Rig D's, Rig D's, yes, yes. <laughs> the OGs are in the beauty. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm loving the fact that the OGs are right there. <laughs> Mr. Ari, I see you, I see you, I see you. You know, then at night, they will not start to play those songs. Hey, I, guys, I would listen literally at, 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 the, the, at the songs. And I remember that time that I would be crying because I was listening to a song that was talking about a heartbreak, and I was not even in a relationship. <laughs> and I would be so moved, extra mushy, just looking for what was not lost. Ah, uh, hey, yes, I want to Braxton, yeah. I want Queen Mother of Home Break My Heart, you know. Then you now enter, hey, ah, with in Osha CD, do me that time, Jesus Christ, 8701. I think the last song there, eh, 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 what was that song now? Separated. In, oh my God. I stay focused. Some of you are already thinking about that, like, come back here. Adele, yes. What am I saying, guys? 87. Mm. <laughs> hey, let's not go there. Let's not go there. But what is going on right now, a lot of us are actually showing how we've dealt with some type of rejection, sadness, burnout. We literally go into a world of, you know, fleshly gratification. For some of you that do not know, FYI, gluttony is a sin. A day for Bible, so uncontrollable eating, and it's actually a sin of the body because you are actually destroying your body. But long story for another day, you know. But you find out that a lot of the times, the things that you seek to want to find succor in are not things of the scriptures. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I, I know of a person that when, you know, they feel this burnout, this feeling of loss or rejection, they start to cut themselves. Yeah, I like, I never knew it existed until I saw someone that actually showed me her hands and said, yes, I used to, like, <clears throat> and for her, it was the fact that she just felt like pain was nothing to her. You know, she was looking for a deeper type of pain. So he already told you how deep the pain of the soul was that she could not feel the pain of the body. She was cutting herself, but it did not feel like, yes, she was seeing blood, but it was not painful compared to the pain that she was feeling in her soul. And a lot of these things, burnout can lead to it. So burnout most likely is not what causes, is not, you know, you, you, you find out that when you are in a space where you are burnt out, some of these emotions come to play. All these emotions that we've said, this feeling of being drained, you have nothing else to give, this overwhelming feeling of drowning, 
you know, avoidant, you know, uninterested, exhausted, fearful, anxious, apathetic, lethargy, listless, a lot of them, <laughs> a lot of them are expressions of burnout. All right. So we all can see here that we all have something that we escape into. Now, another question. How many of us have felt burnout? Now, hear me. On the things of God. You know, there is burnout of, oh, you're tired of, you're tired of your job. You're, you're tired of, of, of life. You're tired of, yes. How many of you felt burnout on matters of faith? On matters of, of, of waiting on the Lord on a particular word? And you just feel like, come on, brah. Even dogs are getting wishes. What's up with me now? How many of us are on that bridge? How many of us feel like we are at the backside of the conversation when it comes to our expectations with God? Because it's one thing to say, oh, I'm feeling bad because someone broke my heart, someone did like that. But when it now looks like it's God that is doing you, how do you relate with that? How do you not vex to the one that you know can smite you, <laughs> even though you feel like vexing? <laughs> so you find out that not only do we have mental burnouts, we also have spiritual burnouts. Physical burnout is also possible, exerting yourself. You know, you are doing maybe like a, a, a job that requires a lot of mental or maybe not mental, physical, physical work. Like if you are maybe in in like a, if you're an Uber driver or you do like manual, some type of manual labor, you're going to feel exhausted. Like sometimes I remember, you know, sometimes you have just entered boss, calm down, you have... And you just go on your bed and you just sleep. Oh, yes, that's another thing that we escape into sleep. Like some of you can sleep and not even feel that rapture has happened. You will not hear do. The, the, in fact, the angel will sing Hallelujah chorus sort of trumpet. It's like, you know, because you're you are so gone. So, what am I trying to say here? When we look at burnout, we are looking at physical burnout. We are looking at mental burnout. We are looking at spiritual burnout. What about emotional burnout? Also related, like you, you just feel like you know what? No, nothing is worth pouring your emotions on. Like I have been too burnt too many times. I'm not. I beg. Let me just day. I'm not giving any emotions. No way. Yeah. I feel that some of us have also experienced that. But you see, every of these emotions or these burnouts, the Bible categorizes them in the words of Jesus, that is, in the words of Jesus. Jesus categorizes them as weariness. Burnout is also weary. In fact, let me show you a translation that I stumbled upon, and I think I like it. So I'm going to show you, I'll first start with the regular translation that you're used to. For scriptural context, you can open your Bibles to Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. It says, then Jesus said, come to me, all of you. Now see the scriptures there. He says, come to me, who? Some of you. He says, all of you. Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. I, I want you to take advantage of the words that you're hearing because I will break in a couple of them down. I will give you rest. I will give you rest. I will give you rest. It says, take my yoke upon me, tak, 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 and let me teach you because I am humble and I'm gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your weary soul. You will find rest. I will give you rest. All right, for my yoke is easy, and my burden that I give to you is light. So it says that I will give you rest. And verse 30 says, the burden I will give you is light. So somebody can already pick here that the rest Jesus is giving 
can also look like burden. But let me not get ahead of myself. Let us continue this conversation. Now, but let's look at message translation. Can somebody read for me what the message translation of Matthew 11, 28, verse 30 says? The message translation, can somebody help me? Anybody in the house? I can read. Oh, that would be so great. Thank you so much. Um, it says, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come mm. to me. Get away with me and you recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and walk with me. Mm. Watch how I do it. Mm. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Come on now. I won't lay anything I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you will learn to live freely and lightly. Thank you so much. When I saw this translation, I was like, boom, this is it, guys. This is it. It just encapsulates everything that I've been thinking about on how to find rest in the wilderness. So follow me because um, now I'm going to be sharing some of the things that I got. But another question that I wondered, uh, let me also throw it open. When you read this scripture, let's do a bit of Bible class. What comes to your mind? What do you mean? What, does, what do you think the Bible is saying when it says, um, come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest? What do you think? Anybody? Like I said, it's going to be interactive. We need to ex. One of the things that I want us to do is see how we interpret scriptures. Because I may not always be in your bedroom. In fact, I will not be there. <laughs> you know, reading scriptures with you. But opportunities like this give, uh, or moments like this give us opportunities to x-ray how we read the scriptures and how we interpret it. Um, you know that one of the biggest medical problems one of the biggest problems in medicine is actually not the disease, but wrong diagnostics. When people misdiagnose a problem, you invariably contribute a higher percentage to the death of that person. So if you misdiagnose the scriptures, it may kill rather than heal. So one of the things that I, want, I, I would love us to do more often is to extrapolate how we view the scriptures. So back to the house. When you read this scripture, Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28, no message, but the regular one that you are used to, what has it always meant to you? Come unto me, all you that, are, that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take up my yoke upon you. What do you think it means to you? Let me try to show you what a yoke looks like. I don't know whether you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, thank you. Yes, sir. That's what a yoke looks like. That metal, that wooden thing in between two cows, that's a yoke. Why would Jesus give me this? I literally just said, I am tired. Why would your solution be take a yoke? Like, I already have this. Why are you giving me this? So, anybody in the house want to share? Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Who wants to speak? What comes to your mind when you read this scripture? All right, hi. Yes, please. Yes, yeah, so uh, when I used to read it for me, I think it meant that like you would always have to carry something. That's like mm. from my uncle. Either you are carrying, you know, the normal stuff, the cultural expectations and what society is supposed to do, or you are carrying you know, what God is in the way of looking things in perspective. And like for me, just as I try to say, come to me, let me show you my way of doing things. I think that that has a lot all right. So you've always felt like you. what that scripture means is you always have to carry something, but this is Christ saying, let me show you how to do things. Fantastic. Any other person? 
How do you, because guys, this is the scripture that your pastor sent to you. Don't worry, come on to me. Or you know that I will give you rest. How do you feel? What do you, what do you do with that word? What does it mean to you? How does it, how do you engage with it? Any other person? Come on, man. I know you guys are, you guys are Bible scholars and you guys are, come on, don't follow my hand. I'll start calling some of you now, some of you leaders. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody? And of course, you know, there's no wrong answer. It's perspective. How do you interpret this scripture? Okay. It says, good evening, everyone. Yes, um, good evening. For me, I think it's just a reassurance that no matter the weight life throws at you, you can always count on the fact that when you take it to God, it becomes easier. So good. All right. So that's what you feel when you read that scripture. Yes. All right. So you feel a sense of reassurance that he can help you on that matter. Okay. Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? The only reason I'm not calling names is I fear that some of you are in noisy places, but then again, I'm like, are they really in noisy places? So guys, help us out. Let let I want it. I want this to be interactive, please. Mm -hmm. And your silence <laughs> most likely tempts me to want to preach, and I don't want to preach. I don't want to preach at anybody today. All right, Pausana. Good then evening, after Pausana, We will take. Okay, sorry, I had no, just no, only said. Oh, okay, okay. So we will take. Good, good, good. Don't give up. Uh, we will take Pausana. Then we will take Lola Day. Then we will take Mrs. Claire Nanny. Yeah. So in that order, Pausana, shoot. Okay, thank you, Pio. So um when to when when two animals are yoked together, like what happens is that their strength doubles. In fact, it more than it more than doubles because they have they have like they have more momentum, they have more more power when they are when they are moving together like they can actually on 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 farmlands when they yoke animals together like they use them to pull stuff or they use them to like till the ground and things like that so if mm. it was just one animal that was doing it the burden will be too much on it but when it's two when they are two you know when they're two it's there's the strength you know, multiplies it's it multiplies their strength and they're able to do more so the burden becomes easier so when when Christ says the body, his body is easy. He, uh, sorry, um, his yoke is easy. It means that to walk, if you do it with him, it's easier. Whatever he says you wanted to do, it's easier if you're doing it with him. Another thing is it, it also gives you direction. Like he also guides guides you. So normally, if there's an animal that's stronger than the other one, um, that the stronger one will be the one that determines the direction they're turning and all, unless the Whoever is guiding, unless the farmer decides to, you know, turn them in a different direction. So that's that just based on the, the, the when I when I imagine it, Victoria, like um, in when I look at it, like in in pictorially, that's how I see it. It's just you know, um, it's it's you you have more strength when you when you you know do it with God than when you try to do things by yourself. So. Yeah, that's the, that's just what I wanted to emphasize on. I think the rest is basically like um, straightforward for me. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Very, very great insight. All right. Lola Day. Um, and as much as possible, I, I what I would love to hear is how you interact with the word. Um, I want us to not be um philosophical because we want to deal with real stuff here. And at the end of, you know, whatever we say, I want us to now come to like real stuff. Like we bring in stuff and say, okay, Lumine, how do you deal with a loss? How do you deal with a child that died? How do you, how do you deal with this? Like, Lumine, I hear what you're saying, but how can I move away from this place? You know, and, and, and I, I feel like we, there's a lot that we need to unearth out of this. So, you know, I want us to really engage from our cause and, you know, speak from our heart, you know, so that we can all feel, you know, that um, vulnerability, if there's any, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that's it. 
So we're taking who now? I think Lola Day. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you, Pio. Um, so just on twenty eight, you had you had asked a question. Um, that what do we think God is offering to us when He says rest? And yes. for me, what comes to me is just peace in my heart. Um, so and how would I say it? It's almost like you you just have so things aren't particularly changing but you have peace you are able mm. to be joyful regardless of what is happening so it's almost like an inner state as opposed to I an, an inner working as opposed to what's going on outside and then as I was just thinking again I, I mean I'm le learning how to swim for the fourth time for some reason I keep on dropping out of the classes but please maybe this time I'm going to be you know the perfect time for me to learn but then I remember every time I learn, and even in this particular class I'm in, the instructor always always tells me, your neck is too tense, relax. If you keep on going like that, you're going to use too much effort. And, by, and halfway through, you'll be too tired. Too tired. Um, you have mm. to relax, let the water carry you. Otherwise, you're going to use too much effort. So I think mm. it's, I, the rest is really, I, I, I won't say it's rest from work, but just... It's trust. I, I guess exactly mm. trusting mm. that the water would carry you. Trusting uh, yeah. that you know, don't put too much effort in trying to fight, and your arm must do this, your leg must do this, but just that rest. Um, and I think it starts from peace in your heart, and then just that knowing that even though things are not, even though there's a big storm outside, you know, the waters are raging, but I just trust that the water would carry me to where I need to get to. So good. Like, thank you so much, um, Lordy. Um, that was insightful. Um, Claire, you want to say something? I, so just before Claire speaks, I, I hope you guys are picking stuff. Like, um, Popsana made a sort of valuable con uh, contribution there when he said, and I picked it, he said, when two animals are yoked, the stronger animal directs the order, the turnings of the weaker animal. And it came alive to me. I picked something there. Um, I, I hope we are picking something in these sessions, guys, are the answers that you were praying for. That reason why you came, that grand word of liberation has already started. So don't snooze, guys. Like things are already happening. People are getting perspective on matters. Like somebody is saying that the, the circumstances may not change, but your outlook is changing. Like that is gold. So I don't want you to maybe hope to, oh, when people comes, the master word of wisdom. No, every God's word of wisdom is going through. And, and I don't, maybe I, sh I show you my note to show you that a lot of things you guys are saying are the things that I also got. But God wants you to be able to believe in the things you know that it can deliver. So that in the days of trouble, you don't still go looking for things that are outside of you when the real answers are within you, right? I like that, Adelaide, don't struggle with water. Like how many of you really knew that if you pump your lungs with enough air, you can actually float? Like when I knew that, I'm like, wow, mind's blown. Because someone like me, I don't trust water. Like, look at me, man. I, I, I would just drown into the belly of the sea. But I'm learning that guess what? God has already created a mechanism inside of me called my lungs that enables me, if I have the right knowledge, to be in a body of water, but my fear should not be drowning because there's something on my inside that God has created that if I inflate with air, can actually keep me afloat. Guys, I hope you guys are listening and you are getting stuff. All right, Claire, the floor is yours. Um, I was going to say. I mean, Lordy explained what I was going to because it was going to be about trusting God through the journey. But I also wanted to emphasize something that I've always known whenever I read this scripture, especially from you know my upbringing. Sorry, please give me a second. Okay. Um. So every time the scripture was read. It would be, um, um, are you tired? Are you worn? You know, Jesus is your rest. And it usually would end there. So there was a perception of, um, 
whatever it is you are carrying, just drop it. Jesus is, has come to remove all your oh, good. problems, right? And so mm. every time I would go to God and I have this problem and I leave still feeling that problem, I'm like, ah, it means that Jesus has not carried my own. Yeah, Maybe he, carried carry, he has not carried the mail. <laughs> The garbage is still outside. <laughs> I feel like come. His, his hands are full. Um, maybe mine will be next week, you know. And there was that there's that mentality of um really everything is supposed to go away. But I mean, growing maturely in Christ, I realize that there is a grace that God gives each one of us differently. You know, when he says that you give a, a grace according, I think it's in Romans, um, to each one teaching, to each one um um healing or whatever but then there is still that grace that he gives to each one of us we're to to paddle ourselves through the life that he has created and you know carved out for for us and just like Lali was saying it will be trust required like nobody can walk my life because nobody's carrying the yoke that God has put on me and the way this scripture has said it now he has created it's like a custom fit yoke like it's it's not oversized the way I read it it's like it's not too much for you. It is just your size. And it's just your size for, for a reason, for you to fit, for you to, <laughs> so that when you're walking, you're not feeling like you're dragging yourself through it. Even though you feel that you're wearing something, you feel that there is something, but it's not. And that's why I was just reading another um version. It's just something that is for me. It wouldn't put too much on me than I can bear. And mm. for God to say, that it means that he's also with us, you know, through the journey. I think when Popsana was also talking, he emphasized it back into like the farming time. And just like he said, they would select animals that fit themselves. Like they would actually pair them up to fit the themselves. And in that scripture later, it says, keep company with me and you learn to live freely. So God and me, we are inside that fit, like the two, and I am the one, he's right beside me. So he's mm. he's the one that is, you know, just like Popsana said, the, the stronger one who would paddle me through the walk that I'm to walk. <laughs> wow, so good, so good, so good. Lola, do you want to say something? No, I just have a question. Why does yeah. it seem that God's rest requires work? Why? Thank you so much. I was waiting, like, I, I think I hinted it when the Bible says, I will give you rest. Then it says, I will give you a light yoke. Hello, sir. <laughs> Neck is feeding me already. So good. Why does it look like God's rest is work? I like that. That's actually a very beautiful question, guys. Does that also, I don't know if you decide to expand it a little bit. Does that also mean that when God said on the seventh day he rested, maybe we've actually interpreted that scripture super wrong. Maybe. Maybe his rest was not that everything shut down. Maybe. As in, I'm just, this is just me thinking, right? All right, so I see more hands up. Interesting, now we are getting to Bible study. Yes. Olu Wale. Oh, good afternoon, good, everyone. Oh, sorry. Good evening, everyone. Sorry, turn on mm -hmm. my end. Uh, yes. So, um, for the uh, March eleven twenty eight, I mean, one of the things I find interesting with that verse is, um, is the is the call out to like come to me, all who are weary and burdened. That means whosoever is going to answer that call has to have come to a place in themselves of accepting that they are burdened and they are weary. Mm. Um, because if you haven't come to that place, then you're not going to come. So self-awareness um, and uh, yes, there's yeah. a there's that that's be a consciousness of the fact that you are weary and that you're burdened, and which it can also be interpreted as the end of yourself. And mm. in an ideal world, we don't necessarily have to always get to the end of ourselves before we come but you know but in this context um it's the self-awareness to know that we are burdened and that we are weary then we come to him and coming to him he gives us rest now the thing is the like you know like uh, lalari was saying that why does he feel like the rest 
means more work. Is if you take a look at it scripturally, there's no vacuum in the spirit. The, the even like okay, we take the analogy of when Jesus casted out the uh, um, spirit, you know, from the madman of Gadara, and he gave an analogy that you know when you cast this out, and the spirit leaves, the demons leave, and then they go around looking for places, and they will come back. If they don't find the place, they come back and see the places um empty and nicely arranged and they come back with seven um stronger demons stronger demons which means um there's no vacuum in the spirit so which means we have to always be connected i feel it's more about that work is more a connection to christ um bringing his kingdom here on earth like if we go via the lord's prayer it says that will be done that kingdom come on earth as in his as in, in as it's in heaven right we always have to be in a po posture of bringing god's kingdom on earth at all times because the the moment we leave that vacuum open something else comes in and then we restart that cycle again and again and if we just even do a little bit more biblical break there it says in the um the joy of the lord is in our is our strength and is in the presence of the lord there's fullness of joy so you, it's like god is trying to keep us on this endless supply of strength and that rest is an endless supply of us being in his presence and of that cycle whereby we don't necessarily have to find ourselves back in that same place of being burdened because the burden I feel the burden that is being spoken about in in eleven twenty eight is burden outside of him, not in him, because he's not. Mm -hmm. He's telling you to come mm -hmm. to him. That means in the whatever burdened you and made you weary was not in him. So that means that's also a, an indication of for you to get to this point where you in him. These things that are burdening you are they his priority or are they yours? But when you mm -hmm. come in, into him, you get to a place of rest, of he's supplying all that. You, there's grace available. Everything is available. And you have strength that this supply, because now he's the yoke, the work you are doing, he's sponsoring it. And that gives credence to Matthew 6.33. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Hope you guys are getting stuff. I saw somebody put something interesting also in the group. Hebrews 4 11. Hebrews 4 really just talks about rest. Um, um yeah. Um, but Hebrews 4 11 says something interesting. It says, Let us therefore now labor to enter into that rest. Because Hebrews 4 says, and there we may a rest for the children of God. And now the Bible says, Let us therefore labor now into to enter into that rest, lest any man falls after the same example of unbelief. Fantastic. Look into that one. All right, Popsana, you want to say something? Yes, real quick, because um, already said most of the things I wanted to say. I know when I talked about um, God providing providing us with limitless strength. So I was going to, I was going to like illustrate something. So by default, we, I mean, if we're talking about rest, it means that we're talking about rest from something, be it work or, I mean, mostly work. You know, it means we've been working, we've been laboring. You know, and we, at some point we need to rest. And so the question is, most of the times we, I mean, the, the thing is, most of the time we don't even know when we when we are supposed to rest, and sometimes we, we don't even feel like we deserve rest. You know, because for example, we've not achieved the things that we want that we want to achieve, the things that we've set out to do, the goals that we've set out, you know, to achieve. We've not, we've not hit the goals. For example, at work, you you're supposed to do you're supposed to do some you know finish some goals at the end of the week, and if you're not be able to finish, you will feel restless. You will not feel, you know, you will not feel fulfilled. You want to do so, put in some more hours during the weekend or something, you know. God forbid, you don't you're not able to finish it during the weekend. The next week it piles up, and like that. So, you know, um, <laughs> so where is there's no room for rest? Or you're a vendor and then. You know, you're able, you're not able to deliver things to your customers, and they keep calling you during the weekend into Sunday, and you're in service. They're you're in service. You're you're receiving phone calls. No rest for you. Like <laughs> you're just you're just always busy. You know. But I think so. What God? Well, I think what God is saying here is that He's going to because if you look at it, well, the difference between that these people have described and then person that is able to rest is that they will have be able to fulfill those things that they have set out to do. You know, and that involves a lot of discipline. It involves a lot of planning. It involves, you know, 
basically guidance and direction and you know the strength to even to even implement those things, the strength to do the work and get it done, the knowledge, the grace. So this, these are the things that God is going to give you, the things that you need in order to be able to get to that point where you say, Oh, yeah, this looks good. When God in during the creation, God God looked at the creation and he was like and he said that it was good. If he was not able to determine that, uh, if if God, if at if when if at the beginning of the creation, after just you know um saying let there be light, he said it was good and rested, you know, <laughs> you know, and, and you know we we carry the nature of God, so we 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 tend to especially as Christians we tend to want to fulfill, you know, get to that point of where we can say that okay yeah this is good, and at that point we can now rest, you know. So imagine you're a vendor and then. You have deliverables and people are calling you and you turn off your phone and say you want to rest. You know, <laughs> that's you know, yeah, that's irresponsible. But I well, what I think my point here is that God's gonna give us the grace when we when we trust him and, and you know put all our burdens on him, he's going and we and work with him, he's going to give us the grace to be able to fulfill all these things that we need to fulfill, hit all the goals that we need to hit, you know, and rest. It doesn't mean that the work ends, but you but at that point you're able to say that this is good, and then you're able to even rest. You know, so that's mm. it. That's what that's awesome. all sure. Thank you so much, Pops. All right. Any other person wants to chime in um, before I take up on something? Um, any other person? Let me see. Is there any? And okay. Oh, I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Please. Then we'll take Peculia. Okay. Um. Good evening, to you. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay, so while we're talking about um, trying to break down this scripture, so me, I, I've always seen it in a different light, probably like um, when I'm burdened, I go to God, tell him, okay, this is what is happening, and he tells me what to do, and then I carry on to do or um, follow up with the instructions I have received. So while we're trying to explain or while we're trying to break it down, something came to my mind in the case of where... Um, you tell him, okay, maybe I have so much work to do. I don't know what to do. Um, I need, I need an answer ASAP or that kind of thing. And he tells you, do this thing, and you're like, God, this does not pertain to anything I'm trying to say. Like I have deliverables, and I'm I've not been able to meet up, and I don't know what to do. And you're telling me to do something that sounds completely different. It felt to me like, okay, he's giving you um, his burden which he's saying to you that is light, but you're like, it is outside of what I would normally do. But I just tell you in a way that it could be that while doing that thing he has instructed you to do, you could find a better perspective or a way to figure out what you need to do for yourself. So it's more or less like a win-win situation, just like when a person made the reference to farm animals and where maybe the weaker, weaker animal is paired with a stronger animal so the work can get done or we are able to utilize every hand on the farm. So it's a case of you have something to do. I also have something to do. How about we do it this way? You do what I need you to do and then you figure out what you need to do for yourself in the process. So I'm just asking, does that also have anything to do with having to do his having to do his work or having to do the instructions he has given us to do. Okay. So yours also comes as a question. Yes, more or less like a question and an answer. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Let me take Perculia and we'll look into that. Perculia? Good evening, everyone. Just can you hear me? Uh, loud and clear. Okay, I just want to buttress what <clears throat> Wale said about work. Now, I want to say that um, for me, rest is doing life with the Holy Spirit. That's the first thing I would like to say. Because um, if you look from the Bible, um, we understand that we can't do anything on our own accord. We can't really do life without the Holy Spirit. That's why he was gifted to us in the first place. And then and we'll talk about um, the reason why does um, the things with God have to do with work He's actually saying, okay, can you take your eyes off yourself and focus on the things that really does matter? Like from Matthew 6, 33 
It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. But we get into a place, we understand that the burden that we were carrying in the first place is like a yoke, or uh, I would say that um, it's like um, what we desire, our desires, our expectations, our wants, our need. Those are the things that are really disturbing us and making us feel tired. But God is saying that, can you lift your eyes out of that situation? Stop seeing yourself and start doing the things of the kingdom, become a kingdom um, envoy and start looking at uh, what I'm doing. Then you can find rest. So my body is light is, I must work the work of he that sends me while it is day. The night comes where no man can work, where you begin to do things, how he would have you do things, not what the word is selling to you, not what you think. And then we understand that the Bible would say in Proverbs that um, there's no idle place, like what Ole was saying, there's no vacuum. There's no, you're, you can't be idle. Is it that you're, you are busy with the things of God or you are busy with the things of the devil? There is no idleness in the spirit. So mm. in uh, but we can also just look at it from um from a health um aspect. Sometimes we, especially ladies, we 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 say we are sleeping, but our mind is calculating one hundred and one things. We are trying to fix. Okay, is the food ready? Is this ready? Are, are, the, are the children going to go to school? This and that. Sometimes we have workload, a lot of workload, and our mind is busy processing those things that we don't even. It does not rest. It does not rest. So you are, even when you feel like you're resting, you are walking. But God is saying to you that, okay, you have been so focused on yourself. Let me show you something else. How about putting your focus on me and start looking at me and start beholding me, start looking at what I'm doing. And then when you start doing that, you forget, You honestly, this has really happened to me. Like I was so busy with, I was so busy with me thinking of um, what I'm doing, uh, work, um, a lot of things, um, um, schedules and everything that I could not see myself I could not see anything I didn't even know that I was already burning out I was stressed out and everything but he turned my 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 uh, my eyes to start seeing him and start looking at him and when I started looking at him I realized that all those things I, I really wanted all those things those social media prayer pressure and everything that the, the, the word was giving to me was not really what I wanted. So some of us, we don't even know what we want. Like if you look mm. from Matthew, if you look from Matthew, um, the Matthew um, 11 from the um, Mystery Translation, you realize that he said, you will lend your first reason of grace. And then he said something else. And he said, if you keep company with me, you will learn to live freely and lightly. So good. So good. You will learn to live freely and lightly. And then he says, I will show you how to take a real rest. So it can be that the, the reason why we, the uh, um, expectations and everything that we have kept um, uh, now um, on our table is not letting us see what he's showing us. And so he's saying, take your eyes. Okay, do this instead of that. And then you will show you a different way. way. Yes, and I'll show you a better mm -hmm. way. Thank you. So good. Thank you, Peculia. We should enroll you for a Bible study class. You have a very Strong master of the Bible. Well done. Well done. Okay, so now because I see two other hands up, please, is your hand still up from the past or I can put it down? It's from the past, sir. Okay, so I would have Dave and I will have Aka. If anybody still has the mind of saying a word, quickly put your hand up now so I can add you to this bunch. Because after this, I would like to speak into certain things so that we can close on time. So Dave, then Dave Akaden, I see some comments on the on the chats. I would also say that too. There's one interesting one by uh, Tony Loba. Tony Loba, you're going to unmute and you're going to explain all this, this German Rasta that you have said here. Because I want to Damilori Ru, you are the one that's going to come and educate us on the German Rasta. Yeah. So Dave. The floor is yours. All right, so good evening, sir. Good evening, everyone. Okay, so Try um, make it come on. so that we can take yes, more people. Come on to me, all you who weary and heavy lady, and I will give you rest. I like the analogy that Popsana gave about having a stronger ox guiding and, and directing the difficult one. So, in this sense, Christ is, is the one who knows, is the one who is stronger. So it's typically saying that we should rest in him we should we should we should we should lean on him meaning that i'm pulling that scripture it says um it's it, 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 interesting how it says um come on to me all of you who are weary and heavily and i'll give you rest 
like uh, then it, it says take up my my yoke. So I would say that in this case, rest is not void of work. Rest means that you have to do something. There's the, the work okay. you must do, and the work and, and what Christ has for us to do is is obedience, is to lean onto Him. It, that's the, that's when yeah. we find the rest, when we trust in Him, when we when we do what He has for us. Because surprisingly, there's the yoke, there's there's the yoke of, of um disobedience, the, the yoke of sin. So the world itself even gives you yoke. Not obeying Christ has his own, his own yoke, but that yoke is burdensome. So Christ is telling us that rest might not necessarily be the, be the be the absence of of doing something. But it's doing what Christ wants us to do part time. That's how we can rest in Him when we are guided in Him. Thank okay, you. be guided, God, and rest doesn't necessarily mean do not work. Very, very, very fantastic. Well done, well said. Uh, last but not least on the list of men that are raising their hands up, Mr. Aka Nani. Good evening, sir. Good evening, everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, I just wanted to say that, uh, real quick that, um, I mean, everybody, what, there's nothing I want to say to you that everybody has not said, but I just wanted to draw a parallel to the sermon you preached, um, you know, I think it was two Sundays ago, where you talked about that cycle, um, love leads to trust and then trust leads to obedience. Um, okay. I think that it's just, this scripture even just expands that even more, because like, when we're saying that we want to lay our burden on Christ and our yoke on him, it's just that whole cycle. I think that this is even a call to intimacy more than even like, you know, anything else. So it's about like learning how to grow in love and trust. Sorry, my love. In trust and, you know, trusting Christ is not easy. It is quite a burden. And also sometimes it can be the burden of learning the lesson through the journey of mm -hmm carrying that lighter yoke or the journey of trust or the journey of obedience because there is always a role to play because it is a, also a journey of faith. The Bible says that faith without works is there and without yeah. faith you can't trust God and faith must come with corresponding action. So every time God gives instructions, God tells us what do we do, how to do it, how to come out of a situation, you know, whether it's to wait, whether it's to pray and that yoke is basically that 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 task of obedience is also work that needs to be done and it's just G jesus is just saying you know just taking us through that cycle you talked about two sundays ago so i just wanted to see all um, the parallels are just paralleling yeah but paralleling. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's that's um that's just what i'm ready to say that that scripture is just reminding me of that yeah and everything so everybody is thank you so much aka um you literally chimed into some of the things that i was going to share so the spirit of God is one. I'm just going to read. Um, Ungaji says, I know that feeling too well when one is about to shut down mentally, uh, one idea creeps in and bam, you're awake. Okay. Um, you can say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, Tony, can, Tony, Tony Lover, can you unmute your mic where you are or you can't? Because Tony Lover says, what I found on Google, <laughs> Google is going to do something today. It says to rest means to relax into something and let it support you. I like that. Rest yourself on the couch for a while if you are tired. To work, rest, the, the word rest comes from the German, comes from the German Rasta, meaning League of Miles. <laughs> now, that's the part where I do understand. If you if you walk that far, you will need to you will need a good rest too. So Tony, if you can unmute, it will be great. If you can't, um, yeah, maybe we will just take it some other time. All right. Okay. Um. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Okay. Loud and clear. Oh, okay. So um, I was actually looking for something else. Then I found this. I was okay. looking for a definition that. It. That will talk about rest that does not mean work. You know, maybe rest that means we're going on a vacation by the seaside, just mm -hmm. relaxing. <laughs> but then I found you. <laughs> so uh, what I what what struck me was um when you rest on something that you relax into something and let it support you. Right, your your weight, your tiredness, your whatever is going to be transferred to whatever it is you're resting on. 
you see that was that was what caught my attention that when we are tired worn out you know and god is inviting us into rest and we rest in it means we are literally transferring our weight our god god is the one that you know begins to pull the weight we are just is carrying us in that season right yeah. and i'm i'm picturing a couch where um you can sit on a couch and you know still have your, your laptop and you're still working but you're in relaxed mood right you're you know especially if it's a really good couch that has soft cushions and everything you can you know you're still working but you're more relaxed as opposed to maybe using you know an mm. office chair it's like you're lounging on a couch but yeah it's just it just it it provides the right support you know it's it is also soothing your back while you are doing the work mm. right so yeah that was what came to mind and that was why i sent it okay thank you very much and thank you for sharing and expatiating a bit differently you know when i saw the jammer word rasta i say hey rastafari <laughs> all right um everybody has pretty much and now you will see that from the things i'm saying that i will start saying sorry you will find excerpts from the things that other people have said and why this is important is so that you know that you also carry the Holy Spirit to help you interpret scriptures and interpret it correctly. Some of you just need to believe a little more the things that you know, and you'll find out how it becomes liberating for you. So here is what I had found out about the scripture. Now, the Bible says, and let's use the conventional scripture that we use before we go into the message translation. It says, come to me, all you who are weary, and carry heavy burdens. Another one says, and heavy laden. Heavy laden is old English for carrying burdens. Now, here's the first thing you need to learn. Jesus, or God, Jesus actually, was speaking to people that already understood the concept of work. You cannot feel like you are weary if you are not working. So what I'm here to show you, you see, when you say you feel low battery, what does low battery mean? Something has drained you. Work has drained you. When you see a feeling of being overwhelmed and drowning, is that the, the assignment in front of you is so difficult that you do not know how to hack it. So you see, you are most likely overwhelmed in relationship to something. You cannot just be overwhelmed that the sun is shining. No. You are overwhelmed that the sun is shining on a frozen cake that you need to deliver and you don't know what to do. So it's not just that the sun is shining. It's the fact that the sun is affecting something that is a task for you. Somebody hear me. The feeling of burnout that you feel is often related to a task. So even for the things of faith, you are trusting God for healing. You are trusting God for his spouse. You are trusting God that he will make good on his promise. It is hinged on your ability to work that word and you burn out because you are working hard, but it is not reciprocated by results. So you enter into a season of weariness. Weariness comes because certain things that you have, are, you have built faith in or you've decided to, you know, engage in is not giving you the result that you wanted. Now, heavy laden, carrying heavy burdens, as it suggests, you are carrying something that is heavy for you to bear. It's slowing your speed. It's of great inconvenience. It is something that you are carrying. A typical case a very, very tedious job. And every day it feels like you are failing. Now, we understand the concept of what Jesus was attacking here. People that have an assignment or have something in their hands. Now, the reason why the Bible would say, take my yoke, or it would say, I will give you rest, is not saying that I will give you the rest that would not, it's not saying I will give you the rest that will not enable you work. He's saying, I will give you rest so that the work does not make you weary. I'll give you a typical example. If my son is carrying 
a keg of five liters and is maybe one years old or two years old, it will most likely need a lot of strength to carry that keg of five liters, right? But if I put my hand beside his hand and I support him in carrying it, he's still carrying that keg, but strength is made available for him to carry it without burning up all his energy just to lift it above the ground. God is not saying stop work. He's saying let me better work. God is not saying stop faith. Oh, that healing has not come. Stop faith. No. He's saying let me help you better your faith. God is not saying stop that marriage. God is saying let me help you better that marriage. The concept of yoke if you read it, especially in the olden days, was because yoke was always for two animals. Though historically they are single yokes, but the yoke that was being spoken here was the yoke of two animals. In fact, most of the analogies that you see even in Google and everything, likens yoke to a wooden beam used between a pair of oxen or other animals to enable them to pull together on a load when walking in pairs. What God seeks to say is that I'm not going to make you run away from your problem. I'm going to help you fix your problem. The concept of work, you must understand, and I've said it before in church, God created work. If he didn't see it as good, he would not create it. But when God intervenes, is when work becomes too much for you to bear. When God, what God does not like is toiling, and I give you an example of toiling. Toiling is doing every single thing you need to do to yield an increase, but the earth still doesn't yield an increase. Toiling is doing every logical thing that you should do, but the result does not correspond to everything that you have done. That is toiling. But work is you put in effort, you get in product. Why do you go to work? Because you put in time and effort, you get in salary. When you don't get salary, it becomes an unfair trade. So God is saying here, I'm not about to make my children stop work. I am fixing the issue, which is not work, but the burdens they feel, the impact of the immense work that has led to their weariness. The same way when Jesus went to Gethsemane and he cried, if it's your will, let this cup pass over me. But not that will, but your will be done. Heaven did not say, oh, my son is burdened. What happened? Jesus found strength to go through it. So it starts to explain to you how God sees rest. Rest is not complacency. Rest is not total abandonment of the project. Rest is aligning, aligning with a body that makes your joint effort yield maximum result. result. Is somebody there with me? That is the concept of rest. When he says, I will give you rest, like Tony also said, resting on something, leaning on something, we have some meetings that we do in the office, and sometimes the meetings can span into two hours or one and a half hours. And because I'm senior manager, for some reason, they just always expect that the manager stand while the rest of the colleagues sit for those meetings. And I know there are some days where I'm wearing maybe a very tight shoe. The shoe is looking pale and good, but it is tight me for leg. And after a while, my legs or my knees or my feet that can hold my body weight starts to quake at the same body weight that it is used to. But the solution is not now that I now look for a bed and lie down because that would be against the work culture. What happens? I lean on my wall 
So I'm still standing, but I have moved support or I've diverted energy, or not, not energy, I have diverted my weight on something else, not my leg. And I can only divert it on something else that I trust. You see, when you look at two animals being yoked together, they experience an insane amount of trust on each other. When you look at two animals that are being yoked together, but that is a physical demonstration of trust. I watched something. I don't know if you are carrying these pots that they use for, for uh, um, cooking, steaming hot pot from, 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 from the pot. Or let me give you another example. How many of you have tried to carry your three-seater furniture? And for you to carry it, some person has to be at one end, the other person has to be at one end. Now, when you need to move, one of you must either walk backwards and the other must walk forward, yes or no? The way that you can ensure that that thing would work is by the one that is walking backward. He's walking trusting that the one that is walking forward is not pushing or walking too fast. And that is why when you are walking backwards, you are telling the guy that is walking forward who is having it easy. Because the one that is walking backwards, he's walking blindly. You are telling him reduce your speed. Because you guys are trying to get to a balanced level, an equilibrium such that the weaker is not seen, the stronger is not seen. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? When two animals are yoked together, you really do not know which is the stronger. Because the way the yoke is, one cannot run faster than the other. The same way the other one that is slow is compelled to walk at the pace of the one that is slow till both of them get their reading. So when the scripture says, I will give you rest, he's saying, I will make it easy for you to carry. I know definitely that some of you, you understand that when God says, I will give you rest on that turbulent marriage, even you, okay, let me give you a ticket. Let me not use marriage because some of you might. I've asked somebody before, ah, this is your work. You get to say, ah, the work is just stressing me. Ah, it's so stressful. I said, eh, hey, ah, nah, let's pray together. Let's pray that God will take you the job. The next he says, no, no, no. I said, but the work is stressful. He said, hey, what I want is easy work. So I said, oh, so you know that the answer to a stressful work is not work at all but a lighter amount of pressure. Good. When you have that understanding, now you can start to ask that God, what is it that I can do in this season that will make this work light? Now you see why when Jesus says, my yoke is light. My burden is easy and my yoke is light because God will never endorse anything that does not require work. The Bible says, I do, Jesus speaking, I do the work of he that has sent me while it is day for night cometh when no man can walk. Did you understand what that scripture meant? It means that God, Jesus was saying that there gets to a season in my life that even I cannot walk. And it's called the night season of life. But Jesus said, you know, for as long as I'm on the earth, I am the light of the world. Meaning that if night is what doesn't make people walk, for as long as I keep becoming light, there will be no darkness so that everybody can keep what? Keep walking. I don't know whether you are getting this mystery that I'm downloading to you. Jesus will never endorse you not working. Somebody needs to hear that. Jesus will never endorse you not working. He would, however, not endorse toiling. Because toiling is a curse. So when God sees his child begging or hungry, he comes in to change that dynamics 
No necessity to say, oh, no, I just want baby girl life. Let me just marry Arab prince. Even when you marry Arab prince, you still need to work to learn Arab prince culture, Arab prince tradition, the things Arab prince like. You can never live a life that does not have an element of work in it. What you should be talking about is the measure of work or the support that you have at work. I run, I'm privileged to have a very, very tedious work cut out for me. But guess what? The pride I feel or the pride that I, the, what, one of the things that gives me pride, let me put it that way, is not that my work is tedious. It's the fact that I have a support team in my staff, in my colleagues, that make the work easy. Work will always be there. He that will not work, what did the Bible say? He should not eat. So I am changing your mindset concerning what you assume when you say Jesus is taking the wheel. Jesus might be taking the wheel, but he will be telling you to apply the brakes. Or you have pressed the accelerator. Don't worry, I'm not the old wheel now. I'm holding the wheel. But we are accelerate. Jesus accelerate by more than 80 kilometers. So I say accelerate. Am I not the one holding the wheel? What God wants with his children is partnership. So he uses this analogy of a yoke because it shows you the partnership between the stronger and the weaker and what it looks like. Let me show you three things that animal yoking does. And Pausana has beautifully said one. The first is called load distribution. Yokes help distribute the weight of a load evenly. Remember what I said, what made you weary, apathetic, lethargic, uninterested, maxed out, uninspired, anxious, fearful, exhausted, avoidant, drowning, is because there is something in front of you like a mountain that seems to tell you that you are not able to overcome it. So God now says, you know what? Bring me into the picture. Let me see what is mightier than you that will be mightier than me. And when you now engage with God by bringing him in on that issue, he now says, you know what, let us fix that issue. He says, yeah, let's talk about it. Let's deal with it. Because God slays giants. He doesn't avoid giants. God slays giants. He doesn't avoid giants. So God will hear that somebody is insulting his name, but he will tell a David, David, partner with me. And he will partner with David to use the most inconsequential battle amenity to bring down a mighty Goliath because he specializes in slaying giants and not running away from them. If you look at the story of David and Goliath and the way David and Goliath, the, the way David fell, you would understand that there was something supernatural there. Simple physics. If I hit you with force in front of you, by the natural laws of physics, you fall backwards. A typical example, when somebody shoots you with a gun in front, the impact of that gun makes you fall backwards because of the force that the gun comes with or the bullet comes in. The Bible said that when David slung his, 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 um, his, his stone, it was just one stone, it landed at the very fore of the head of Goliath, and Goliath fell face down. And some theologians have recorded that every knee must bow. That that was a practical example of what happened. That before Goliath met his death, because the Bible said that when Goliath fell, David now took the sword of Goliath and beheaded him. So you can assume that the sling made him faint or he got into a coma or his, his brain got destabilized and he fell, and David finished it. But what's, what people assume to that inference is the reason why they, Goliath did not fall backwards was because God wanted to bring that scripture to pass, that 
at the mention of the name of Jesus, or in my presence, every knee bows. Because when he fell down, his knees had to touch the ground. So God slays giants. He doesn't run away from them. But what God does is he partners with his children. Because then you will tell me, would you say that David was a master sling user? No. Would you say that the stone he used had special components that had the ability to drill a hole in the head of anything? No. Would you say that, oh, there was a velocity that David's arm had that made him swing the sling so fast that it made speed go behind the stone that caused that damage? No. Because no matter how that sling was, it was not as fast as a moving bullet. Something supernatural happened there that made David get an easy victory. But this is the interpretation of that scripture that some of you have. That when God says, I will fight your battle, God shows up in the battle and David goes to go and sleep, to go and sleep Capri Sun and is watching the movie with popcorn. No. David stays in the battle. David is receiving instructions. And the instructions that will look normal, God amplifies it. And it looks supernatural. So the scripture says, so the first thing is load distribution. The second thing is efficiency. It says by allowing multiple animals to work together, yokes increase efficiency in agricultural tasks. So when the Lord says, wear my yoke, he's saying if we work together, you will be efficient. I took up a role that I didn't know jack about how to function in that role because prior to that role, the work I was doing was really centered around me, me proving myself, me being the great account manager. Now I had to take a role where I will be leading a team, where I'm measured not by what I do, but how I lead a team. Totally different from my general experience in life. And like a weight or like a yoke, I felt it that I was failing at the role. Because I was not having a team that was coherent. We we're always fighting. I felt insecure. I was at loggerheads. I had insecurity. I was quick to snap. I was exercising brute uh, power. I was not using influence because I was weary. Because I did not know what to do. Then I took this to God. And legit, guys, God says the first one of the things that I had, and most of the many things He taught me, was the gift of a man make its way for Him. And that scripture changed my dynamics. It's the gift of a man makes way for Him. So if I do not have a space in the heart of people, maybe my gift has not penetrated. So I started to invest, not just in the gift of resources, but in the gift of time, in the gift of care in the gift of jokes, in the gift of just coming down, in the gift of solution providing. And as I started to give that gift, the me that had no space in the heart of my, my colleagues, I started to find space. We started to laugh. Before you know it, they started to offer support. Before you know it, we'll have a meeting, all of us will brainstorm, and amazing ideas are coming from them. What happened? Was it that I, I left that role? No was that God made me efficient in the role by listening to him. Now, it is still a yoke on me because what a yoke does is it constricts your movement, meaning that you are not allowed to run more than the one beside you. So I cannot say, oh, God, I got it, I got it, I got it. God, leave me alone. No, the yoke binds us together. The yoke says, oh, chill, calm down. Still follow my voice, follow my leading. Then God is saying, okay, Olimde, what do you think? Do you want to go left? Okay, let's see, go left. It keeps both of you in alignment. But it doesn't eliminate the work. It makes you efficient at the work. The last thing a yoke does, yoke provides a way to guide and control the animals during the work. Every time you feel weary about an obstacle, or you feel burnt out about a situation, when you bring it to God, one of the things God does is God starts to control the way you feel. Have you ever felt 
burnt out about someone that maybe you used to like and you guys had a fallout and that just became a yoke inside of you. Every time you see the person, you're just full of regret or you're like, he's saying, you're like, what kind of rubbish is this? I can't forgive this person. This person has, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. But God now says, auntie, I want to put a yoke on you. That yoke now says, oh yeah, go and say hi to her. Like, God, I don't say hi to her. That yoke now controls you. How? You now start to feel like you don't have peace until you do that thing. Part of the plan of a yoke is that it controls your excesses. Have you seen the neck of the animal? It cannot just move it anywhere because the yoke constricts it to walk well, circumspectly. So, what God is saying in the scriptures, guys, is for that heavy load that you carry, the yoke I will give you would make you achieve on that work. Now, what did he say? He says, let me teach you. Why would he say, let me teach you? Because you guys are together. When Jesus says, let me teach you, he's saying, the yoke was also on my neck at a time. So he starts to show you in scriptures what he did when he was also yoked in that issue. He was yoked in that pain. He was yoked in that area. Do you know there was a time Jesus prayed and he felt like his father was not answering him? Is that different from the way you feel sometimes? Do you know there was a time Jesus was healing people and the Bible said that in, in Matthew 11, it says, if the signs I did in Capernaum, I did it in Syria or Sidon, they would have been better for it. Meaning that there was a place that Jesus poured out all of himself and they still treated him like shit. Doesn't that happen to you? Is that not why you also feel burnt out in that marriage or in that relationship? Jesus was looking at a multitude that was about to stone a woman to death and he knew that he needed to save that woman but yet he knew that there was an aspect of the law that actually said that prostitutes should be killed. Do you think that was not a moment of Jesus in confusion? Hmm, what do I do? The Bible says he knelt, he buried, he, he lowered down and he started writing on the floor. And I believe that around that time he was writing on the floor, he was receiving downloads from heaven, saying, I'm not going to speak in the haste. This is not the time where I'm just going to say one thing that, ah, if I say anything here, this woman's life is gone. Lord, perspective. Lord, wisdom. Was the answer that, and Jesus teleported, and he teleported with the woman, and the Pharisees did not see both of them. No! In that same place, a word of liberation came out. And every man that had moral justification to stone a prostitute, all of a sudden felt convicted that they could not lay a stone on the woman. He stayed in that issue with her. So he was saying to you, let me teach you. Whatever it is that has burnt you out, I know what it feels like. But I have excelled at it. Typical case of the stronger ox and the weaker ox. He enables you to carry out those plans. Can I tell you guys something? You know one of the things that give God joy, give God one of his great, one of the things that give God, gives God joy? When you are victorious. He that must be victorious cannot leave the battle. They must win the battle, not leave the battle. So God says that, guys, we don't run from war. We win wars. We don't run from battles. We win battles. So that's what he says. He says, take my yoke upon you. Do you see that? He says, take my yoke upon you. Meaning, let me guide let me, let me go to those three things. Let me reduce the weight by making it evenly distributed. Let me make you efficient. Let me control. Give me control. For some of you that work in the IT space, if you are having a problem with your laptop, some of the things that these new companies will do, they'll say, is, can I override your system? And though you are with your laptop right here and your mouse is in your hand, 
something happens and the guy takes control of your mouse and your mouse is moving by the instruction of that person, but it is still your system. Guess what? One of the ways that you can stop that person from doing what he's doing is shutting down your laptop. But as long as that laptop is on, that person has full ability to do what you want him to do for you. But the laptop must be on. At some point, he, must, he will be asking you, where did you put the file? Is it here? Or what can you see there? And you are having literally somebody in your laptop, even though the laptop is right in front of you. But what did you do? You gave him control. I, like I told you, you cannot give control to anyone you don't trust. The same way, I will not know that something has the ability to fail and I will still trust in that thing. I will not lean on a wall that I'm not sure is strong enough in a board meeting because I fear that I may fall. So he says, let me take my yoke. Let me show you a more excellent way. He says, let me teach you. Because I am humble and I'm gentle at heart. You know, one of the things that the Lord shared with me, he says, Olumide, every time you see the word um, humility, it is a call for grace. I said, hmm. He said, I said, why? He says, the Bible says, I resist the proud and I give what to the, I give grace to the who? To the humble. So he says, every time you see the word humility, it's a beckoning of grace. What is grace? When a supernatural order of event happens for you that you, by your own abilities, cannot create for yourself. He says, because I am humble. Let me teach you because I am humble. Why was he teaching you? Because he knows that you also need that humility. And he says, when you learn from me, you will now find rest for your soul. Do you see what has just happened? I will give you rest. It's different from you will find rest for your soul. I will give you rest. Like Tony said, is I'm creating a support system that enables you to work effectively. You will find rest for your soul. Is you now being able to tell yourself, I have no reason to be afraid. I have no reason to feel like I have no help. I have no reason to feel like I am, I, am, I am alone in this. I have no reason to feel like I am not sorted. I have no reason to feel like time has passed me by. I am, you are the one finding rest for your soul because your soul is where weariness sits. So God is saying that by my offering you help, which is rest, or introducing to you a, a different way of working, you will not be able to tell yourself, I'm not worried anymore. You will find rest for your soul. He now says here, for my yoke is easy and my burden that I give to you is light. You remember when I started, I said, God is saying, I will give you rest. But he now says, the burden I give you is light. That already should have told somebody that the rest that you see in these places are different. There is a different rest that he will give you and is, there is a rest that he will give you that is different from the rest you will find for your soul. The rest that he will give you, you may look at it as burden. He's saying it is light work. Other transitions call it light work. Try to find if I can find another translation that calls it. Yeah. Light work. It says my the burden I give to you is light. And I will give you light work. Meaning that when we share the burdens of this yoke, the yoke was about a thousand kg. At the end of the day, because I'm the bigger one, I'm carrying 899. You are carrying only 110. But when they see us, they see the stretch of a mighty yoke that we are carrying but they don't know that you are carrying the lighter part of the yoke. Because the stronger animal is always more eager to help the other one turn, help the other one grow, help the other one be better. So if we juxtapose that with the message transition, it says, are you tired? You can't, you have to be tired 
about something. You 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 just like, I don't know how I'm gonna say it. Like those that even wake up from sleep tired is because their mind was racing. It's because their mind never slept. He says, "Are you worn out? What's when? Do, what do you say? Something is worn out when you've used it to the point like your tires. You've used your tires to the point where the tractions are gone." Meaning that the demand that is being placed on your tires is more than what the manufacturer intended for you to have. It says burnt out on religion. Let me speak a little bit into this area of burning out for religion. I started to ask myself that, does religion or does, and I like the choice of words or message because he used religion. He did not use spirituality. Religion can burn you out. I'll give you an example. The all mark example of my life. Married for nine years, no kids. Religion says, Olumde, what are you doing? Olumde, never. You need to, you need to pray. You, you, have, you have not en 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 entered dimensions and portals. You have not, you have not sat with God at a level. Have you engaged on a dry fast of 14 years? And all, a lot of those kind of things. It's religion, to be honest. What spirituality says is, how well do you know what God is saying concerning this thing? Seek to know what God's view is. What if your child is supposed to be like another John the Baptist? That no matter how much you pray, there is a time that child must come in Paris Passu with the Savior. What if the innovation your child is supposed to birth, the world does not yet have, the world has not advanced in technology yet to get it. What if your child is supposed to be born in the year 2030? And I'm not saying that is it, of course, but what if certain types of things should have started happening in the world by 2030? That by the time your child is born into that ecosystem, he starts to think in a certain way. Maybe that time we will not even be talking AI. AI is new concept there. Maybe the world would have mastered AI, would have had maybe robots. Only God knows what the world is going to look like in 2030. But your child is born there and is using the technology of that place, of that time, to create signs and wonders. How did I know this? I didn't get into school, Unilag or, or Covenant University. Four years. I waited four years. And why it looked like a delay, and I was burnt out writing jump to jam, God was only giving me my grace is sufficient because I needed to be in Covenant University set 2005 to set 2009. I needed, it was sacrosanct that I was there because that was the only time that I would be there and I would be the student vice chairman. That was the only time I would be privileged to meet Papa face to face because God had already scheduled other students of his to be in set 2004, set 2003, set 2002, set 2006. And the vacancy for me was set 2005. And everything that felt like was happening to me while I was praying was God only saying, only they take my yoke. Guys, you know that was while I was waiting that I got serious with my Christianity. It was that time that I started to engage in the things of the spirit. I started to dare myself to break out from the mold of negativity and low self-esteem that I've shrouded myself in. That time that I was burning out, feeling like a failure academically, something was growing in me. So I started to look at it. That if we really stay with God on matters, would we really burn out the way we say we are burnt out? Look at it very closely. The things that made you come to the place where you said you are burnt out is actually something related to a fear that you lost, a lie that you believed, a reality that seemed real to you but was not the truth of the word, or a feeling that you took up somewhere. Another thing the Lord said, he said, Ulumide, the scripture says, I give beauty for ashes. The Bible says, come into his presence with thanksgiving, into his cause with praise. The Bible makes us understand that as we behold him, we are what? We are changed from one level of glory into another. God says, I'm the father that every time my children visit me, visit me they go with a gift. Like, I, am, I do way better than Father Christmas or Santa Claus. 
And I started to find out that, guys, there was a season in my life where I was still not in school. Like, I understand why I got serious with my faith. I was still not in school. So what happened is I would stay at home, go for mini classes and stuff like that. When my mother comes, you know, because it's just me and her, um, one of the things we love to do was we love we love to watch um, telenovelas together. So Secret of the Sun, Maria de Los Angeles, The Rich Also Cry, No One But You, um, uh, Ruth and Raquel. Those were things that were right at, you know, my, me and my mother's alley. It was a very good bonding period for my mother and I. But as we, as I started to deepen in this test, in this knowing knowing God a bit more, don't forget, oh, I was already praying. I said, God, now school, school, school. I'll go to Lasso, Lasso, do one thing. They, 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 they. was not panning out. But I remember that I would hear in my voice while I'm watching TV. I just say, stand up now, go to your room and come and worship me. Come and worship you, Bao. I will go. And it's not like as if there's not an bus in my room. That time I did not have CD, I did not have tape. It was just bare, hollow room. And I'll be clapping. I bring the sacrifice of praise into the hands of the Lord. Ba, 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 ba. And from that feeling of I come before you today, all of a sudden, it feels as though the one thing that made me come into your presence has lifted. I am aware it's still there because I've not received an email that says, congratulations, you have gotten into school. But I feel a joy in chaos. I feel another ability to keep at what I'm doing. What is that if not a yoke on me that has allowed the weight of what I was going through to be evenly spread to the point where I can carry it? Because according to statistics, I'm still an undergraduate that has not gotten to uni I've gotten a university. But I can carry the weight such that it does not lead me to despair. I can carry it on my back that God is working on my academics such that it does not make me feel like I am left behind. Rather, I am taking advantage of me not getting into school now to do other things that I most likely would not have had the opportunity to do when I'm really reading for a course paper and I was developing my knowledge of the world, I was reading three chapters a day, five on Saturday, five on Sunday, three chapters Monday to Friday, five on Saturday, five on Sunday. I was writing books. I was writing in, in, interpretations of what I got in scriptures. I was writing that memory verses. I was building edifice, though I was on undergraduate. It's only there with me. So I started to see that it was not the avoidance of the work that made rest. It was the presence of the work that still gave me a reason to feel like, you know what? God is in control. God is sorting this out. Guess what? Part of the work there that was light was me having the right scriptures to quote in the areas of my anxiety. Christ has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power love. And the sound man, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. It is in him I live, I move, I have my being. That season of my life needed me to labor to get into that rest. I had to labor in writing. I had to labor in keeping my notes. I had to labor in timeliness of making the presence. I would not say, oh, let me just watch this movie to the end. No, I had to labor to stand up and say, I have a bigger mandate. I have something better that I want to lay hold of. Is somebody there with me? And those are the ways that what looks like labor was light labor. It was light work. It was light work. Do you know that one of the things that happen to you when you partner with God in certain turbulent issues of your life is that you guys start to build memories together. Oh, the joy when I remember how I felt when I was get, looking for a job. And I got out of Covenant University. And I told God, God, I'm currently doing this job that pays me 40000 naira as a full graduate of Covenant University. Too one, too strong, baje baje. And I said, God, I'm not going to do this job for more than one year. I know that in the next one year, I'm going to get a great job. 
and I started to write down the jobs that I wanted to get. And each month was going, I was writing the exam. I went to write an interview. I was coming down from the bike, putting my interview books in my lap, in my bag. Some thieves thought that I was carrying a laptop bag because of how the books made my laptop, my bag look. They busted my head. I started bleeding. They took my bag thinking it was a laptop. And I was like, God, I'm literally coming from an interview. What kind of oppression is this? But you will then remember, count it all joy. Count it all joy. I say, hey, is this what, is this what it means to be? To, to, to be pressed on all sides, but not crushed. For the first few weeks, I was frantic because the guys came, they were just walking like normal people, and in like split seconds, they just did the brief, blah, busted my head open, collected my back. So I started getting very anxious. I started getting very anxious. When somebody walks past me, I'm afraid. Even in that, God started to tell me, what did I teach you about fear? Guys, I was still without the job I wanted. Then this company came. I didn't even know about it. It was my friend's cousin. I said, oh, there's this company called the Azure. You guys should apply. And me and my friend did it. And they picked me. And I checked when I resumed. It was exactly a year. Guys, these are things that build memory. God is not saying run away from the work. He says, can we build memory with that work? Can you see that I am Obaunik Beja, the one that fights your battle, but you are in the battle with him as he's fighting it. So Matthew, the message transition says, are you tired? Are you burnt out of religion? So I just want to help somebody. Even in your journey of trusting God for healing and faith, check it beyond him answering that health condition. What else is he answering? What else is he fixing? What else is he doing? One thing that this scripture also told me is that, you know this feeling that we used to say, ah, I'm just burnt out, or oh, God should just come and locate me. Irony. He don't used to locate people. That you go go meet up. Come unto me, all ye that labor. And I love what somebody said. He says, it takes a level of self-awareness for you to know that I need a stronger ox. That feeling of God, I'm a, you can't just be watching me. I'm a God, you just come and find me. Can be borderline laziness. And God does not entertain laziness. So that's why God will say things like a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hand to do nothing. And poverty will come like a bandit. He hates laziness. It would rather you walk slowly than you not walk at all. That was why he was extremely upset in the parable of the talent. How dare you bury my talent? Let me hear that, ah, master, I'm still in the process of trying to multiply it, but things have not clicked. Don't tell me you buried it. Don't tell me you just gave up on God. Still have that space in your heart to believe that God I know you can come through. Now, this is where mercy comes in because mercy now comes and looks for you. Yeah, but I'm saying that as you journey in Christ, you cannot always have that disposition when you are weary. That for every time you go through a circumstance, God must be the one finding you. Ah, auntie, where would you grow now? Brother, where would you grow? When would you run to his embrace? When would the name of the Lord be a strong tower and the righteous will run in and they are safe? Why must he always look for you like a prodigal? Even the prodigal son came back. Yes, I know he leaves the 99 to look for the one, the one that does not know him. You, you have tasted of him now. Why don't you run to him? Why don't you hide yourself in him? Why don't you say, Lord, I don't know what is going on, but I need you to help me in this. I need perspective on what is going on in my life. As against God does not love me, you know, maybe this whole Christianity is a sham. So you must come to him. He says, message says, get away with me and you will recover your life. I will show you how to take a real rest. I believe that what message was trying to say here was, I will show you how to really work easy. Except your work is synonymous to you dying on the cross. There's no work that you are doing that God cannot teach you how to do it better. 
It's only if your work is higher than dying on the cross, then I will say that ah, God cannot help you down. Even Jesus does not know what he feels like. But if your work cannot equate to the immense physical, psychological, emotional, spiritual pain of looking at people insult you, looking at people tear your skin, looking at people nail you, looking at you having to breathe from you jacking yourself up from a rickety plank, looking at spiritually the weight of sin of every single person, past, present, and future on you, looking at you, looking at your father's face, and your father is turning, turning his back at you because you do not look like what he knows. If you have not been through that, don't tell me that Jesus cannot teach you. Humble thyself. Humble thyself. It is learn the enforced rhythm of grace. That's a very beautiful word, but if we are to open the fiber of that word, it's saying that learn to operate on the place of grace, not from Toiling, not from, ah, I must, I must, ah, I must, I must, I must. Okay, God, what do you want us to do? Where do you want us to turn? How do you want us to go about it? Okay, this is what I have now, Lord. I am doing it. So this is my small business. I will keep showing up. I will still show up. I'm not going to throw in the towel. I will try, try another day. Some of you, you don't even need weekly grace. You just need daily grace to not burn out. Like, God, just give me today my grace. No, just give me grace for today. Before you know it, you have done five years standing strong in the will of the Lord. So I find out that when God says, I will give you rest, he's saying to you, that thing that you are going through will not look like a hard burden. Like the story of the keg that I said, the boy will still be carrying the keg but he's carrying it from the place of rest because the one that is really doing the heavy lifting is his father. But he will still be close to that keg. Some of you are saying like, but God, can this heat just, can it go faster? What if you are gold? Ay, ay, ay. What if you are gold? What if you are gold that needs the heat to find expression. Oh God, this water is drowning me. This water wants to kill me. What if you are a seed that is buried in the ground? What if you are supposed to mix with that water and the soil and all the nutrients in the soil so that you can start to break out into something more than a seed? And eventually the world sees a big tree. But that big tree was a seed drenched in water. So God will not take away the seed for fear of he wants to drown. God will say, you know what? I have put in you the ability to stay in water and not die. From this water you rise. From this water you rise. And that's why the Bible says, you will walk through fire. A message I heard a long time ago by a friend of mine. He says, Olumde, the things of God are not a if, they are a when. Not say if you walk through fire, then you walk through fire. When you walk through fire, I will be there. When you pass through water, it will not drown you. The things of God are aware, not because He hates you, but glory comes out from predicaments. What is testimony? Is it not overcoming an adversity in simple words? What is testimony? Overcoming an adversity. And how do you overcome an adversity? By the one that you have standing there with you and saying, this too shall pass. The last thing I found out when I was reading the scripture was there is a mental disposition that you need if you're in the company of God. Is humility. It says, keep company with me and you will learn to live freely and lightly. You would what? Learn. When you come to God, come with your writing pad. Don't come with an instruction manual. Don't tell him what you want him to do. 
more food than not, tell, ask him, what are you trying to do with this? One of the things genuinely, guys, that has helped me better manage this whole waiting on a child. Guys, don't, don't joke oh, that, oh, because we say it so casually, it's not a thing. Come back and ask me when I'm, you remember that I'm the only child of my mother. And my mother needs to carry a grandchild. Like, while all of you have siblings that she can depend on, I'm the only one. Every other one does not just quite look like it. Cousins, uncles, and aunt, no. I am the only one. So even subconsciously, even if she does not say that I know the pressure will work. But in that storm, yesterday, I just woke up. So we have pictures of some cute little babies on our, um, what's it called, our wardrobe. And I just looked at them and like, ah, the joy in my heart when the storms come. Another day I was speaking to PI. I was like, ah, I was, having, I was having a conversation with our children. And she was laughing and we were laughing because I was driving to church and I was imagining how it would look like when these kids are at the back and one is trying to look outside and I'm telling him, come on, be a good boy, sit down. And the other one is reading a book and I'm asking, what are you reading? No, it was your law. You know, and we're all jamming to gospel music. These are the things that enables the weight become evenly distributed for me to even have this type of vision and dreams. So I don't operate from the place of burning out because somebody is daily telling me, Lumide, there is enough grace for 2025, June the 6th or June the 7th. And there will be enough grace for 2024, sorry, 2024, June the 8th. They say there will be another grace for 2024, June the 9th. To the perfectness of what I have said comes to pass, you don't need to burn out. So every time we come to the feet of Jesus, ensure that you live with a joy of your salvation. Ensure that you live with the understanding that this work of faith, this work of believing, this staying at these jobs, this looking at this husband that just seems to be doing anyhow, or this child that wants to run me streets is part of what God wants to use for a miracle. And my eyes will see it. So I would ask the Lord, Lord, show me what to do. How did you handle this? How did you handle a man that was demon possessed and you did not run away? How did you cast out the devil out of him? How did you manage children and all their excesses, but you still said, let the little children come unto me? How did you do it? How did you intermingle with a prostitute? How did you even come from the lineage of a prostitute? We have. Are there things in your family that trail you and make you like, ah, that's the one, the one that her father went to jail. That, that's the one, that, that's the famous thief. Oh, you know it. And the mother has two children on this street with two different fathers. Jesus, how did you live on earth with such stigmatization and you fulfill purpose? Teach me. Because the Bible says we do not have a high priest that is not moved with the feelings of our infirmity. Meaning that every single feeling of apathy, lethargy, listless, uninterestedness, capacity being maxed out, being uninspired, anxious, fear, confused, exhausted, avoided, overwhelmed, drained out, burnt out, he felt it all. Do you know there was a place that Jesus said, my soul is grieved to the point of death. What are we talking about? Jesus, that prays for people, told people, come and pray for me. How did he not show an example? So if he comes and he tells you, let me teach you. Nah, nah. Let me teach you. Because he went through every single one of it. And he came out tops. If I am in you and you are in me, you will bear much fruits. How do we burn? How, how do we how do we find our rest even in the wilderness? Is knowing that the Lord is about to turn that very wilderness into a garden. And by working and partnering with him, he will show you how that place 
that looks dry and dead can become a lush garden. And even if he wants you to pivot, like the ox, he will be the one that will nudge you into turning left. He will be the one that will nudge you. Do you know the funny thing about when you are yoked, when two animals are yoked together, when one bows down, the other bows down. Hey, God. One does not have the ability to bow down and the other his head is up. It's almost like they're in perfect synchronization. It's, it's, it's like the weirdest analogy, guys. He bows, you bow. Even if you don't want to bow, he compels you to bow. When you guys go to a place and he's eating, you too, you are forced to eat. You don't say, no, I don't feel hungry. You will find food, there you go chop up. And the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us. Now and forever. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Yoke. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Dwells inside of you. That's the yoke. That's the yoke. As it compelled Christ, it compels you. As he moved Christ, he moves you. As he enabled Jesus to live 100% divinity and 100% humanity, he also teaches you how to live divinity. As he bridles Jesus' tongue, he bridles your tongue. As he teaches you how to be angry but not sin, he teaches you how to be angry but not sin. When the ox bows down, yoked, the yoked animal also bows down. When they kneel, they kneel together. They cannot afford to not do things together. One's neck will snap. So Jesus uses this analogy of animals being yoked to say, when you go through stuff, come to me. Let's go through it together. And while you are going through it together, learn how to replicate my spirit in these issues. When you look at it that way, the outcome will be rest. Not from work, but a rest of assurance that God is here. Another thing that the Lord said I should share, and this is a bit, this is by enough a bit for much you're, you're learning. Okay, let me show you another scripture. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Uh, beautiful, beautiful. Let me show you a scripture. See First Peter 5. First Peter 5, 7 says, See, says, therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of the Lord so that you may be exalted. But first, 5b says, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Are you here? God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble because a proud ox will not align with the other ox. Pride is a citadel of self. Pride exalts self. And that's why God resists it because Pride does not allow you to synchronize with God. But the one that is humble is able to synchronize. When God says, bend down, you don't say why, you bend. When God says, drink water, you don't say how, you drink. When God says, take that humility or take that humiliation, don't worry, it's coming for your good. They're not like, God, no, they know they insult me for where I come from. You do it. He says, but it gives grace to the humble. But see what I'm saying in verse 6? He says, therefore, humble yourself. You see what he says? God says he gives grace to whoever engages in humility. But it now tells you that the yoke that is light, that he is going to give you, is to what? Humble yourself. You, you humbling yourself is a work. Is work. Humility, no, they just fall on you. Mm -mm. No. You need to humble yourself. That's a work there. It says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Think about it. Humble yourself under the mighty hand. Humble yourself under the, under the yoke of the Lord. So that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Did you see what is happening there? You are casting all your seeming cares, your marriage, your job, your peace, your love, your anything. But you are also receiving his mighty hand. You are receiving humility. You are receiving what, what he's saying, his instruction. When you say, humble yourself under the mighty hand of the Lord. When you say, I am under his mighty hand. When you say a nation is under the mighty hand of a dictator, it means that that dictator is the one giving that nation everything they need. They cannot drink water if, the, if that dictator says drink, if that dictator says starve. They cannot eat if that dictator says fast. 
So while you are casting all your cares and you're saying, God, I give this burden to you, I don't want to take it anymore. It's not for me. Just is not saying, now follow my instructions. Let me lord over you. Let me be your master. Let us work together. Let us be yoked together. It now says, be sober and vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion. This is the reason why God will never endorse anything that is not work. Because he's saying that, see, the adversary that you are against is like a roaring lion looking for who to devour. He will not see you if you are not busy. He would only see you if you are not busy, sorry. He says he's seeking for who to devour, but guess what you do? Resist him. Steadfast in what? In faith. Knowing that the same suffering I experienced by your brothers in the earth, but may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthens, and settles you. Because that yoke was what, was what made you suffer. But God comes, and while you used to experience suffering, now you now experience perfection, establishment, strength. Why do you need strength if you are not supposed to work? Why do you need strength if you are not supposed to face that thing that made you suffer and defeat it? To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. The last thing I want to share is another reason, and this is a bit a la carte, meaning it may not be everyone. Another reason that you may feel weary or you may feel burnt out is if you are already yoked with the Lord. Hear me well. If you are already yoked with the Lord, but you do not submit to his will. Typical example, if two animals are yoked, and one clearly is the stronger animal. But the other animal, though strong, is not stronger. When one says he wants to go left, and the other says he wants to go right, because of the strength of the stronger animal, he is able to stir that conversation or stir that movement. But the weaker animal would experience the greater amount of neck pain because he is not aligning. Now, what does that mean? For some of us, your burn, your burnout is because you are trying to go outside the wheel. And what I see is like the case of Nenevi. God is saying, go this way. But you are fixated on a type of way, so you are causing yourself harm. And it feels like as if you are always being depleted because it takes you twice as much energy to defy than to obey. It takes you twice as much energy to defy, you know what I mean by defy, not do what he's saying, than to obey. I found out that sometimes in my life where I just want to Netflix and chill and not read my scripture, oh, the heaviness. Now that heaviness is not because God brought it. It's because there is a devil roaring to and fro. That's when I remember that oh, this has not moved in my life. That's when I remember that oh, this could be the reason why we do have a child. That's why I remember that oh, what is something happens to my mother. That's why, because the time God is saying, Olunde, read the word, strengthen your faith, increase in your knowledge of God. You say no. Angelina Jolie is the one you want to listen to. You now see that one now. That one cannot offer you anything but laughter and entertainment. But there is a devil that is after that the treasures of your heart. And you maybe just look at one thing in the Adelina Jolila movie and say, ah, oh, that's true. This lady actually adopted children from Africa. Maybe adoption is not a bad thing after all. Now, is it a bad thing? It's not a bad thing. But what has the Lord said to you? What has the Lord said to you? Well, because I'm not listening, I'm now having to chase a dream that is like what Sarah provided to Abraham as against what God provided for Abraham. Sleep with your servant. It's easy. And you see that, that, that singular choice of defi defiance is part of the Islamic problem that we have to today. Just choosing to not align. So some, somehow we get burnout sometimes because our spirit is also picking defiance. We get burnt out sometimes because our spirit man is speaking defiance. And sometimes that I know God wants me to get up on my feet and take a book and read. 
but I'm just lazy. I'm just, I feel that defiance. It affects me. I start to feel weak. I start to feel like I'm not coordinated. I start to feel like I'm not coherent enough. I'm, I start to feel, I start to second guess my call. I know because I've not been in the presence. I've opened myself to certain things that I should not have opened myself to. And that is why I urge everyone you're being burnt out. You're being burnt out sometimes. Could be the gamut of issue that you are going through. But sometimes it could also be God telling you, and my dear daughter, hacking to the voice of the Lord. Hacking. Jonah did not necessarily need to know what it felt like to be in the mouth of a whale. It was not a, it was not a compulsory cause, it was an elective cause. It was an elective cause. But defiance sometimes make us burn out. Make us feel like we're in a season in our lives where things are not working. Things work, it's just that maybe you are defiant. Some of you, it's a call over your life. Some of you, God has been telling you, evangelize in this office, but lie, lie. They don't catch pretty girl like you doing it. And you just lie under the fact that or in a corporate setting, you know, it's weird. A time in my office, I was so eager to leave. And the Lord asked me just one question. I was like, ah, oh God, I want the next job. I want the next soul. And the God said, Olumide, if I also ask you, how many souls have you won in this company for me? Ah. I say, and daddy, I and this one, this and. He said, so do you think that with all the things that I've done for you, I want you to leave this place without having a soul or souls won for me? So I found out that I was getting dissatisfied at my work, not because the pressure of work was a lot, but because what should feed my spirit, I was not hearkening to it. The moment I got that revelation, it was like as if a new fire shot up in my body. It was like as if I received another assignment in my place of work. It shot up something inside of me. I said, eh, eh. now I know what to do. Now I know what is missing. So guess what, guys? I pay very careful thoughts to when people are speaking. I hear a voice. I hear an opportunity to evangelize. I swing into action. I take it. I hear somebody, you know, share with me a very vulnerable season of their life, something that happened. Guess what? I found out that the moment I accepted that call, people by their own accord started to just feel a need to share certain personal things with me. Even people that had had maybe grievances with him before now, they would just feel the need to share with me. And I say, ah, you know, I'm sorry, I don't want to feel like this, but. I believe that there's also a dimension here. There's a perspective here. You guys are like, oh, wow, oh my God. Thank you. Even to the colleague I was always telling you about, I was always a pain in the neck to me. A miracle happened two days ago. I was just singing praises at God. So this was an assignment that me, I was calling a yoke. I was experiencing fatigue, but it was not so much of fatigue as against my distance from my purpose. And for every time you are distant from your purpose, your spirit man will feel dry. Because the money was not doing it for me. The ability to do and travel or whatever was not doing it for me. I knew that something was calling my soul. And until that thing is satisfied, nothing was good enough. Some of you stop concentrating too much on the fact that you don't have a car. Turn your Uber to evangelism. Turn your bus to evangelism. Make it a decision that every week you pay the bus fare of one person and you give them a tract. If you focus on the assignment, you'll find that, that doing it is not so hard. Look at that person in your office. Decide to buy them lunch. The gift of a man, make it way. Make up. See, there is a way you give somebody something that if you ask for their 30 minutes, even if they don't have it, they'll give you because you have bought it with your kindness. 
and use that position to sell Christ to them. It's an anomaly that your environment feels that your Christianity is passive. It's an anomaly. It's an anomaly. Your work should show it. Your speech should show it. Your humility should show it. Your actions should show it. So that's another thing I wanted to tell somebody. That you may be feeling dry. Because every other thing that you have tried to fill that assignment is no longer feeling it. And God is saying, are you ready to do this thing or not? Or do you just want to play church? I know you love me, but do you fear me? That's also another thing I heard recently this year. And you may love the Lord, but you may not fear him. Oh, I love Jesus, but Jesus cannot command you. It's a bit of that even in our marriages. Oh, I love my husband. I tell people, we, your, your, your husband, sometimes your wife is a representation of how you honor the Lord. Oh, we just want to be friends. You don't want there to be instructive conversations. Oh, no, I think you need to do this now. I think we need to start to do this now. Here we come, you look at what book are you reading now? I will not say, what do you mean? How dare you? Do you know I am? Because not only are we friends, both of us have certain roles in our lives that demand instructive relationship. And I'll tell her, ah, babe, I know how you do. I'm so sorry. Is it for her? Does the, does, does, does the knowledge that I have, does it transmit to her by kissing? Is it not for me? But I know that her interest is for my good. And she says, oh, Lumi, I'm not happy with you. I'm not, you should have read something by now. It's the same with God. like, come on, come on, come on. Forget this issue. Focus, focus. Go this place. Do this thing. Take that project. Commit to this assignment. You have already gone this far. You don't need to turn back now. It's already clear that you are a Jesus baby. Just go the full 10 yards. This one, they are still trying to find the old you in. Egypt is dead. They are all in the Red Sea. Come into Canaan. And we are there struggling, struggling to still be woke. He that is not in Christ is dead. You are as woke as how God is alive in you. No, I just, I just don't want to feel like a geek. I don't want them to feel like they cannot reach me. Have you noticed that even when celebrities, those so-called celebrities, when the life issues happen to them, they know how to find their way to Shiloh. They know how to find their way to MFN. But you, that are supposed to be a mobile portal of the presence of God, they don't see you because you have blended all your elements away. Not, no difference now. You have cracked their jokes, you have said their lines, you have played their play, you have drank their drink, you have smoked their smoke, you have, you have, you have. When they now need gospel, they enter night bus, they go to one baba in the east that is telling them he has seven came to, 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 to Cain to gain which out of their body. When you are the mobile portal, your PPA, your place of primary assignment is that place. And God is saying, man this jurisdiction for me. Make we carry this yoke together. But well, you say no. So I just want somebody to check their neck. If you see that neck where they pay you, it's because God is swiping left and you're swiping right. That yoke may not be a compulsory cause. It may be an elective. Maybe you need to shake it off you. Anything that you do, that you do not hear the master say, well done, good and faithful servant, check it again. Check it again. I'm not saying it's bad, but just check. Just check. It's not harmful to check. This thing that I'm doing, one last has got commented on it. Every time you try to pray about one area, but it feels like as if God is diverting you to that area. Now you are the follow up. Just go to that area. Swipe, swipe, just swipe right. Just swipe right. God bless us. I hope we're able to understand this interesting topic of ours. I hope we're able to learn a thing or two. Is there que ah? Can I take two questions? I just take two, two, two. Whatever questions I can't take now. Um, I'll maybe take it next week or we'll just find a way of handling it. Maybe I'll just quickly brush on it on, in church. 
or something, I don't know. Two questions, two very pertinent, straight to the point, very precise, very articulate questions. <laughs> we best go to the number. Any question? Any question? Because I'm mindful that there might be people that are that are in oh my days. Oh, I had somebody that was trying to join and she couldn't join. Oh, that's so sad. Any question? Experiencing rest in the wilderness. Experiencing rest in the wilderness. Experiencing rest in the wilderness. Okay. I think it's all thanks. So as we round up, can we just say a quick word of prayer? And um, we're going to use that scripture to pray. And somebody wants to just say, just take it line by line. And Jesus says, come to me. So can you just say, Lord, I come to you with my burden. I come to you with this weight. I come to you with this burden. I come to you with this yoke. I come to you with this weariness. And I ask you to give me your type of rest. Your type of rest. Not the rest I have thought I wanted, but your type of rest. Lord, I gladly take up your yoke. I gladly take up your yoke. Your yoke is saying that you want to partner with me on this journey. Your yoke is saying, okay, you know what? Let's share this burden only with you. Ignore this thing that you are going through. And let me show you another type of thing that you should focus on. Like Ginnika said, sometimes it's just God saying, you know what, I'm, I'm not oblivious of this that you're saying, but can we try something else? Take up my yoke. Lord, I gladly take up your yoke. I gladly take up your yoke. Lord, teach me. Is somebody praying this evening? Lord, teach me. I come to you with a humble and gentle heart, just like you have. A humble heart is the heart that grace can enter. I receive grace because of my humility. Lord, help me to find rest for my soul. My soul is weary. It is my soul that is actually weary. It is my soul that wants rest. Help me to find rest for it. Help me to be still, oh, my soul. You know, I heard a song. That song, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Another woman says, silence the voice in my heart, Lord. Silence the voice in my heart. I want to see you. Lord, I want to find rest in my soul. Silence the voice. Silence the voice of chaos. Silence the voice that is saying that I will not finish well. Silence the voice that says that this is who I will look like in another 70, 80 years. Silence the voice. Silence the voice. Silence the voice. Silence the voice. Silence the voice, Lord. Silence the voice. Talk to the Lord today. Talk to the Lord today. Say that I receive your easy yoke and I carry your light burden or your light work. If you want to use modern day slang, say I carry your soft work. I carry your light work. Your work that does not look like the weariness that I feel. Some of you need to check it. That feeling you feel, is it really of God? Is it God that is putting that much on you? Or is religion? Oh, I must be strong for my sisters. I must be strong for my brothers. Rather than you trying to be strong for your brothers and sisters, why don't you just be in God's presence and enjoy whatever strength it is available for you? And you will find out that you are actually strong for them. But you are not yoking yourself to building strength by your own flesh. I won't win this battle by the strength of my own arms. Check it. That yoke that you feel. Ah, I cannot feel. Oh, I cannot feel. Is it really that you cannot feel? Or is it because a voice is telling you that you will fail? And you are trying to overcompensate that voice. Rather than you shout, I will not fail. Why don't you silence the thought and say, shut up, you, you devil of, of failure. Is it really faith that you are doing? Or you are only responding to fear? Some of you, you need to check it. The Bible made us understand that Noah, uh, uh, sorry, Job, Job was actually responding to fear. How did we know? Job would commit, he would, he would, he would give sacrifice for even the sins that his children has not committed. And he will now say, the thing I have feared the most has come upon me. So he was doing righteously from a place of fear. 
ah, I don't, ah, ah, hey, hey, I don't want to lose my word. So I don't want to. Ah. Some of you are in a marriage. You are not enjoying it because you are so frantic. Hey, you should not look outside. She should not do anything. You should not do this. She should not do that. Calm down. He gave it his beloved sleep. That weight that you feel, that weariness, huh? nothing must happen to my children. Is it from the place of the word of God? Or are you only reacting to the lies of the enemy? Are you weary because you are tired? Or you are weary because you have not casted out certain lies? Lord, I take up your burden. Huh? My husband will leave me the way he's already going. Eh? He's already, he looks like as if he's sleeping around. You cannot now unmake him sleep around by being afraid. Talk to the Lord and let the Lord teach you or guide you on how you bring the matter to him. Father Lord, I receive my hands. I receive, sorry, help. I saw open the eyes of my heart here. Yeah, by Jordan G. Welch, thank you. Teach me, Lord. Somebody wants to say, I wear this, this burden, this, this burden that you have given me, I wear it with pride. The burden of being close to you. The burden of seeking your face. The burden of keeping our regular intimate sessions. I wear this burden with pride. If the world calls it a burden, I wear it with pride. And Father Lord, I pray for the generation of that set of people that they are struggling with doing your will. And that, that defiance is what is causing the snap in their neck. I ask, oh God, that you let them see what you see. Open their eyes. The Bible says that open the eyes that you may see that those that are with us are more than those against us. Let them see that what you are calling them to, to do is bigger than what they feel is a better version for their life. Help them to see it. Help them to see that beyond being the captain of an industry, he's also one of the world's greatest tele-evangelists. Let them see that beyond that woman that does not have any need or any lack whatsoever, he's also a woman that will feed multiple nations and children in multiple continents. Lord, let them see what you see. In Jesus' name we pray.